been working on a Punnett square and you think, man, I really wish there were more than just these four squares. Well, if you ever have, today is your lucky day. And if not, well, prepare to have more squares. Because up until this point, we have focused on one pair of alleles, hence a monohybrid cross, where mono means one. In guinea pigs, for example, the trait of having or not having hair is influenced by a pair of alleles. But guinea pigs have more traits than just hair, right? Well, if you perform a cross with two pairs of alleles, that's called a dihybrid cross. The root di means two, so two pairs of alleles. One of us has this cat named Moo. Moo is in what the cow says, because he kind of looks like a cow, and we're not that creative with names. Anyway, the thing about Moo is that he is a cat that loves sinks. You get up in the morning and you try to splash water on your face and, oh no, there's a cat in your sink. And you try to brush your teeth and, no, there's a cat in your sink. And you have people over and you're terrified that they're going to flip out because there's a cat peeking out of the sink. Now, not all cats like sinks, but Moo does. Around the clock, chances are he's in the sink. We cannot find any information about whether this is a genetic trait. We don't know if Moo's parents liked sinks. But then we realize that Moo is not that weird because there's this website called catsinsinks.com. Seriously, Google it. You're going to find tons of cats and sinks. What if this was a genetic trait? Now, there's no research that we can find that demonstrates this is genetic, and it's probably not. Behaviors like that can be challenging to study. But for practicing dihybrid squares, let's imagine what it would be like if that was a genetic trait. So if this was genetic, hypothetically, cats that did like sinks would have to have a dominant allele, capital S, and cats that did not like sinks would have to have a pair of recessive alleles, lowercase s. Let's also take into account that cats, like guinea pigs in our previous video, typically have hair, but they can also be hairless. Having hair will be represented by the allele big H, and not having hair would require two recessive little h alleles. So let's say we want to cross a cat that is heterozygous for the trait of having hair and also for liking sinks. Heterozygous for both traits would be represented by the genotype big H little h big S little s. Now we want to cross that cat with a hairless cat that does not like sinks. To be hairless, the cat must be little h little h. All it takes is one dominant allele, a capital H in this case, for it to have hair. And if it does not like sinks, a recessive trait in our example, then it is little s little s. All it takes is one dominant allele, a capital S, and it would like sinks. So the second cat has a genotype of little h little h little s little s. Remember how it looks like in a regular monohybrid Punnett square? Here's an example of what it would look like if you were crossing a big H little h cat with a little h little h cat. Remember how you put the parents on the top and the sides like this? Well, when you are doing this, those alleles on the top and the sides, they represent the alleles that would be in the gametes of the parents. Gametes are sperm cells if male and egg cells if female. And they contain half of the genetic material as the cat's body cells. So it makes sense that if there are two alleles, the letters, in the big H little h parent, then a gamete would only carry one letter, a big H or a little h. This is known as Mendel's Law of Segregation. The gametes only carry one allele for a gene. Well, if you have a cat that is big H little h, big S little s, then there are four alleles there. Two genes, one involving hair and one involving sinks, so if gametes carry only one allele, a letter, per gene, that means that each gamete is going to have two alleles. In those gametes, with each of them having two alleles, the letters, you have to account for every possible combination. Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment says that those alleles are not linked. That means a cat can have hair and like sinks or not have hair and like sinks. There is no link with the sink. <laughs> it rhymes. So let's work out a dihybrid with the parent cross here. Step one, write the parent cross with your 16 square Punnett square. Step two, we have to get the gamete combinations from the parents. You know, what we write along the top and the side of the Punnett square. 
We really like the FOIL method to come up with these gamete combinations, but this is not the only way you can do this. We just like this way. So we're going to show you how to FOIL the first parent. And the first parent is big H, little h, big S, little s. So to do FOIL, we do it like this. First, outside, inside, last. And you get these gamete combinations. Let's place those on the top of the Punnett square like this. Now let's go ahead and foil the other parent. The other parent is little h, little h, little s, little s. So we'll do first, outside, inside, last. And you get these gamete combinations. Let's place those on the side of the Punnett square like this. And yes, they're all the same for this parent because notice that was all this parent could contribute as far as alleles. Now remember again, each gamete must have one allele letter of each gene. That's why you won't find a gamete with only H's or only S's. Remember, one allele of each. And now for step three, combine the gametes to see what the offspring prediction will be. Now, for formatting purposes, because the parents had H's coming before S's, we're going to write it that way with the offspring as well. For formatting, you should also put capitals of each letter type before the lowercase. So in our example, what is the genotype ratio in the predicted offspring? Now remember that genotypes are the genetic makeups, the letters that represent the alleles. So four out of 16 ended up working for all these genotypes. That's a one to one to one to one ratio. It's kind of fun to say. Now, what about phenotypes? Well, half of the cats here have hair and half of the cats here don't. But with dye hybrids, often you are asked about both traits. For example, what is the chance that there would be a kitten that has the same phenotype as our Moo? Moo has hair and he likes sinks. Well, it's a four out of 16, 25% chance that a kitten would have the same phenotype as Moo. We could write out that four out of 16 cats have hair and like sinks. Four out of 16 cats have hair and dislike sinks. Four out of 16 cats are hairless and like sinks. And four out of 16 cats are hairless and dislike sinks. This is also a one to one to one to one ratio. Now some big things to remember. In our example, the genotype and phenotype ratios happen to be the same. This does not always happen. The handout will give you an example of when it's not. Just remember the steps to setting up the problem correctly and you'll be fine. Also remember that Punnett squares are predictions. This Punnett square is only predicting the chances of having offspring with certain genotypes or phenotypes. It's fascinating, really. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters and we remind you to stay curious.